All right. Hello, everybody. Um, we are a few minutes early to this webinar, and um, I, I opened it up because we have a great group of audience members. And I just thought uh, before we get started in a few minutes, it would be really cool if you guys can take a minute to check out some of the polls that we posted in the um, in that side panel there. Um, it would be really helpful for me and Andrew as we do our presentation today to understand a little bit more about you. And since we have so many people on today, uh, we wanted to take the time to hear from you. So please take a chance to fill out the polls. I see people are already filling it out. This is great. We've got some people who are using the Wheelhouse platform, some people who aren't, some people who are using Hostfully, some people who aren't, um, people around the United States and across uh, other parts of the Americas. So thank you all for joining and taking the time to fill out the poll. We will get started at probably 11.02. It's in about two minutes. And we have a very full agenda today. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of really relevant information for your business that will help you as you think about the new year and also just as you think about the day-to-day -day and managing your vacation rental or short-term rental property management business. That's a mouthful, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. <laughs> never, never easy to choose the right terminology for the category. I know you say you say vacation rentals and people are like, I'm not a vacation rental. I'm a short term rental. And you say short term rental. and People say I'm not really short term rental. I'm really a vacation rental. And I, I think they're all true. So we just have to be inclusive as, as inclusive as we can. Right. Um, all right. Great. So thank you all for filling this out. I still see people entering and information and also it's really cool that we're seeing that people found out about this both from wheelhouse and hostfully which is great so i'm excited to bring those two groups together and i think this is going to be very relevant content for everybody um we have somebody from asia we have one person most of the attendees so far are from the united states um one from asia one from outside of the us but in the americas maybe in canada and um, a mix of customers across the platforms. All right. Well, it's 11.01. I kind of want to get going, Andrew, to give you enough time. Is that cool? I think we should do it. We've got a lot to get through. All right, let's do it. Uh, so <laughs> welcome. So well, a huge welcome. It's December 2020, and I am so delighted to um, be coming to you from San Francisco, where I'm joined by Andrew Kitchell from Wheelhouse. Um, and Andrew and I found out that we actually live less than a mile from each other. So we could almost run out and high five each other if the stay at home regulations were not in effect today. Um, but we are, um, we're, we're very close to each other in San Francisco and we are really excited to join you today. Uh, my name is Margot Schmorak and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Hostfully and Andrew Kitchell is the CEO and co-founder of Wheelhouse um, and is a really a seasoned veteran in the vacation rental industry in general. I'm super excited to hear what you have to say, Andrew. Um, <laughs> so uh, just briefly about Hostfully, we offer a property management platform and digital guidebooks. With our property management platform, you can distribute your bookings across multiple OTAs, including Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and many others. We offer a beautiful out-of-the-box direct bookings website with a centralized calendar so that you can get those extra reservations from get guests, get them to rebook with you, um, do it easily and um, with a great brand presence. We give you automated communications out of the box, including text and email, so that you don't have to go through the hassle of sending all those individualized emails to your customers. And we also are the, uh, one of the most connected platforms in the industry, which brings us to our webinar today. We have an API with direct connections to 30 plus partners, including dynamic pricing providers, payment providers, accounting providers, turnover management, so many more. Um, check out our integrations page at hostly.com. Our second product is our beautiful guidebooks product. And I'm really proud to announce that we recently won a Front Runners Award from Gartner um, and Gartner's Magic Quadrant for being one of the top software providers in the industry to give customers value and also a great customer experience. Um, our guidebooks help property managers save time avoiding those repetitive questions in their listing, drive more brand awareness and repeat bookings because you're able to communicate with them to them and this beautiful mobile digital guidebook that you have for your listing. And also you can make more money with our guidebooks because you can upsell extra services like early check um, check in or late checkout or mid stay cleaning. So if you haven't checked out Hostfully guidebooks, please do. It's a really amazing product and lots of people are using it and I'm very happy with it. Um, so without further ado, I am so excited to talk to Andrew today um, from Wheelhouse. And so Andrew, I'm going to let you take it from here. Sweet. Great intro. Um, 
The uh, yeah, I'm going to kick it off. I as as I said, we actually have quite a bit of content to get through today. We've got uh, 80 plus slides after this one, so I'm I'm going to move pretty fast and I talk quickly normally, but uh, I'll I will probably be talking extra quickly today. That's part one. Part two is um, when Marco and I were prepping for this, I actually, I won't be able to see the audience or see any questions coming in. So if you do have a question, and if I do end up moving through something too quickly and you want us to double click on it, send a note, Margo might interrupt me, uh, et cetera, just to have me kind of slow down or explain something more. But hopefully what we present today is simple, clear, fun, exciting, and most importantly, helpful. Uh, so the, the topic today is gonna be earning more revenue. Um, when we took a look at the audience list, we actually had a whole bunch of folks sign up we actually decided that the, the most important thing would be to give all of you some tools and tricks to be able to do revenue management for your space really well. I think a truism across the categories, every single market is responding differently. So it's hard to look even at one region and apply all the lessons from that to you. So we're gonna give you tools and tricks, both free as well as obviously leveraging Wheelhouse to be able to improve revenue. 2021 is going to be a very interesting year. Uh, you kind of got to throw out most of the practices that the industry's had in the past and look, look, look to new things. So hopefully today we give you some of the tools to be able to do that. Um, if you do like what you see today, Hostfully and our team have combined for uh, discount codes. So we're launching our new platform, Wheelhouse Pro, on Thursday. You can sign up even today, starting now or for the next uh, while here using the, the referral code Hostfully50. You'll get 50% off your first three months. All right, now to the real presentation. Um, hi all, I'm Andrew. I actually uh, know that there's some both friends from Seattle as well as friends from the industry on the call. Excited to see you all here uh, and excited to say hello today. But um, for those who've been working in the category for a long time, uh, you know, I, I too have been at this for a long time. I first started uh, building an Airbnb kind of, I was a host back in 2010. So paid for my first business by renting out my room, I would go and sleep on these couches that you see in the living room. Uh, and you, you know, over the over the years, I've hosted some pretty interesting guests, including this individual, Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb. So Brian came and stayed at my house house in 2010. I was already hooked to Airbnb on Airbnb before that, but only became more deeply embedded in the category after that. For the last 10 years, I've been working in the software space around most generally real estate, but more in a more focused fashion on, on the short-term rental space. Uh, I think it's safe to say that I, I view short-term rentals as yes, kind of a change in the hospitality space, but also a change in the larger real estate space as well. So Movity was a data and analytics company. We helped with early mapping for people to help find which homes would be good for them to live in. We were acquired by Trulia, then went on to found Beyond Pricing and about seven years ago now founded Wheelhouse as well with uh, a specialty in deep data science around the short-term rental space. We're gonna dive into some of that today. Uh, this is a little sneak peek at, peek at the Wheelhouse platform, but um, we, we are pretty darn good at driving revenue. So the average customer currently earns 22.6% more. We have increased top users revenue by more than 100%. I recognize that as a ridiculous claim. So I'm actually getting, there's a, there's a customer referral coming up in a second that will validate this. Um, we do have a, a really strong CSAT score. That means a customer satisfaction score. And the reason I highlight that is uh, we have three big investments at Wheelhouse. We invest in data science, we invest in a usable UI, and we invest in a really good customer service team that can take care of you. And we take care of everyone, right? If you have a single listing or a thousand plus listings, we'll take care of you. Uh, we're interested in helping you build your business. And we've been fortunate over the years to win, uh, win partnerships with ma multiple major channels. Um, I'm gonna show just a couple, I think you know, showing is easier than telling sometimes, but in terms of uh, these are customer reviews, you can see on their recent reviews on Trustpilot, but uh, great system, strong ROI, and uh, I love this. I know Hostfully has great customer service too, but we really pride ourselves in this domain. Um, this person just noting that they they truly did 2x their revenue. So again, that's the 100%. But uh, we do see that that really kind of aberrant performance of, of really changing someone's business profile by by leveraging revenue management. Obviously, we hope we can do the same for, for many folks. Uh, and we'll skip through this one quickly, but yes, we make a lot more money. All this is publicly available. So Wheelhouse is a revenue management and an insights platform. We're going to talk about both uh, the revenue management tool we're talking about. We, we are, again, launching the pro version tomorrow, so it's kind of fun to be online 
today, or sorry, on, on Thursday here. And we do have an insights tool that pairs really well with the revenue management. We're going to talk about kind of how you can leverage it in conjunction with revenue management to, to help um, drive performance. We are designed for professionals, so some of the tooling we will be stepping through today is, yes, it, it is easy for, for someone who's new to the space to be able to leverage Wheelhouse, but you can also get pretty, um, pretty technical with this tool. So we'll talk about that. And lastly, uh, we are an automated platform. However, uh, Wheelhouse is very customizable. Um, so you can set kind of all sorts of rules around how we perform and the, and the model will, will respect those. Today's topic and skills. And Margo, I'm just going to do a quick check. Are you, you're able to see all the slides, right? And, yeah, and okay. everything is looking great. I want to keep giving you like thumbs up, but I know you're not going to see me, but you're doing great. How's cool. everybody, how, how's everybody think he's doing great, right? Yes, you're doing great. No, it's, right. it's all, everything's awesome. Thank you. Great. And we're already through 12 slides. We're making progress. Today's yeah, we also, we also doubled the number of people on this um, call from the very beginning. So just heads up on that. Oh, too. good. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we're starting the real stuff. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're going to try to teach you three skills today. Uh, I, I hope these are broadly applicable to you and your market. Um, I'm almost certain some of them will be. I know there's varying levels of uh, experience in terms of how, how certain experienced people are with revenue management on this call, but I do hope that everyone takes at least one thing away. Um, the first skill, market master. Uh, there are truly three key demand drivers. You can earn a lot more money if you play these right. We're going to teach you those and how to figure those out for your market. Uh, we're going to talk about responding rapidly to your market, especially to new demand patterns. Now, of course, we are an automated tool. We'll talk about that, but then we'll talk about should you not be choosing to automate, how you can leverage information on a regular basis from your market to be able to respond to local demand patterns. And uh, the last section we're going to cover is book best, which is how do you, especially in an evolving environment, capture the most profitable bookings? Section one. Mastering your market in three minutes. Here we go. There are three key demand drivers that impact every market. You probably know these. Uh, and truly leveraging these demand drivers will increase your revenue by about 20%. We can say that safely. When, when I actually first started in the short-term rental space and looking at revenue management, about 80% of the category had the same price every single night of the year. Uh, and they adjusted their prices maybe once a year. It was uh, really flat rate pricing, obviously in the hotel and the flight space, prices are very, very dynamic. So just even applying, um, you know, capturing higher revenue during peak periods and capturing more bookings during low periods by leveraging pricing can drive a lot more revenue. You all know that we're not gonna stay with basics today. We're gonna get a little more in the optimizations, but you can really drive revenue higher by these, uh, understanding these demand patterns. First demand pattern. Seasonal demand. Um, the way to think about seasonal demand is it's really the long, slow moving curve that usually pre COVID was really repetitive on an annual basis, right? Uh, in certain markets, whether you're an urban market, a sun and snow destination, et cetera, something like Nashville, Austin, something in between, you are going to find a seasonal demand curve. And, and again, it's important that uh, the seasonal demand curve impacts essentially every listing in the market. It's long and slow moving. And historically, it has been really predictable. The second demand curve is a little more compressed, right? It's a day of week demand curve. And again, the way to think about this for, for sun and snow destinations, often you're going to have really strong weekends, particularly when your season is hot. Urban markets will sometimes see really strong corporate demand. And then you'll see markets again, like Nashville and Austin, where you'll have actually strong weeks and stronger weekends, right? So uh, knowing your day of week curve can allow you to, to do a lot better. And the last curve is your local events slash holidays curve. Great. Now, that's easy. How do we figure these out for your market? Let's start with seasonal demand. So um, we're going to start going through a little bit of a video here. And um, what I'm going to show you for each of these sections, so we're going to go through these three demand sections. I'm going to show you a simple, free way to attach kind of or kind of to, to figure out this demand curve for your market. And then I'll show you how we can also help on Wheelhouse. So here we go. Oops, sorry. So this is WeatherSpark. It's a pretty interesting tool. There's a lot of data here. Uh, one thing you'll notice on the bottom, though, is a tourism score. Um, so you can just go look at any market. It's got a whole bunch of them, but you can kind of they give tourism scores. They give you a lot of data. And all this data, again, since, since people often travel to places they love uh, when the weather lines up, really good service. Uh, it's cheap. It's free. And uh, a lot of data here for you. 
Sweet. So you can even see on the right side there, they'll show you data sources, all sorts of inf interesting information. This is totally free, weatherspark.com. Uh, pretty cool. I actually, um, I feel like there, are, there used to be a little bit better data around this, but WeatherSpark is my favorite tool today for just kind of general free uh, intelligence off of any off of any software provider in, in the space. Um, the second thing is you could also go to Wheelhouse, and so we'll tell you a little bit more here. Um, we have a trends tool, so if you wanted to come in and look at how your market has performed over a year, this chart, this is all free. We'll show you again how to how your season or how your market's adjusting. You can come into your seasonality settings and you can adjust them if you think Wheelhouse isn't pricing a particular month correct. You can come in and change the base price. This video is going to roll through again. It's a little bit of an accelerated video, but again, you can come to your free market report. You can look at trends. You can discern your market seasonality curve. You can filter by listing types, performance, etc. Go back into your listing and make any adjustments you want. Right. So we will automate it. Our price recommendations. We'll take your seasonality into account, but you can also adjust anything you like. And Andrew, you said these are really consistent patterns with regard to like climate uh, seasonality, right? So this is something you can kind of do once and then set it for a while, right? You don't need to come back to it every month, right? Just do it annually or what do you think? Uh, I would have said that last year. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, this, this is gonna be really interesting and we're gonna get to how you respond to your changing market in a little bit of a later section here. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I do expect there's obviously gonna be re some return to some seasonal pattern for markets. Mm -hmm. What's changed so dramatically across all markets is length of stay and other factors like that, which who knows? The way I like to think about it is right now, the short-term rental market in a lot of markets is outperforming hotels. Mm -hmm. Hoteliers have their fingers crossed that old patterns of travel return. No guarantee they will. Mm -hmm. So you could look at um, this seasonal demand curve. It probably is going to be pretty steady. I just right now would urge you to be really good at the, the second part of the presentation, which is reacting really quickly to your changing market. Mm -hmm. So Great. some combination of all these tools is going to be is going to be helpful. Does that answer your question? Yeah, totally. Thank you so much. Sweet. OK, day of week demand. Um, again, there used to be better tooling for this. Here's what I'm using now. If you want to do, well, here's what I would use if you wanted to build your own revenue management model. Um, let's watch this video again. One place to look for day of week information for your market is actually airline flights. So here we're on Google's flight tracker and we're going to go look and we're going to look at a one day trip and then we're going to look ahead a few months just to get rid of kind of the near term noise. So we're going to look at March of next year and we'll see a regular pattern here, right? Here's Tuesday and Tuesday and Tuesday. So these couple weeks here really illustrate what some day of week impacts look like for flights. And you can see that Tuesday is a very quiet day. Wednesday picks up, Thursday picks up more. You can imagine people coming in for the long weekend. And then on Sunday, they fly home. So this looks like a normal day of week, repeatable day of week pattern. And you can translate this into information about your short-term rental and when people are likely to arrive, which appears to be Thursday. Sweet. So again, a slightly imperfect tool, but it's a free tool. It's a free way to to look at that. Um, Google actually has, in my opinion, kind of the best uh, the best charting and predicting for uh, as just a general a general tool for you. They have now some more hotel data in there, so you know, good free stuff to potentially use. Um, of course, you can also do the same thing on your market report and wheelhouse. We'll quickly show another video here. Oops. Um, so here we go. We're going to the we're going to the market report, and here you can just see for any market we're going to show you the day of week in your market, right? Maybe it's a little bit of a shortcut. Again, it's free. Once you figure out your day of week term, you can come to your weekend adjustments, and you can either use kind of a conservative recommended or aggressive approach, or customize your weekends, right? We will actually go and adjust above above our model's recommendation. We'll kind of take your advice. So again, simple ways to combine uh, easily accessible data for your market with the settings within your kind of revenue management tool. So that could be helpful to you as well, potentially. Um, quick, hack, quick hack for local events and holidays. We are gonna cover this more in the reactive, the reactive modeling section, but um, again, if you wanna figure out events near you, uh, I'm, I'm guessing many of you have already gone to your convention center, have already gone to maybe a local tourism bureau uh, on a convention center, on, on many local convention center websites, they'll actually tell you the number of guests that are expected to join. So in San Francisco, for example, at, at Moscone Center, we'll say 18,000 people at an event, and you can see the relative kind of scale of an event. Um, 
if that's not available, there's like, this is another kind of free hack. Um, that's kind of weird, but like, let's just watch this quickly. So uh, in this case, we're coming in, we're leveraging Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster's business is selling big events. You can filter by your current location and you can actually come here and you can say, how far away do I want to look at events? I just want to look very proximally to me. And I only want to look at the most relevant events. And again, since they are trying to get you to pay money for big events, there's a little slight hack here. It's not going to be perfect, but again, it's a free thing to add to your arsenal. You can also go on Facebook and look at the event calendar. But um, I like this because it's almost just, it's only going to show me some of the highest level things. Um, just something to use that might be off your holiday calendar. It might be off, off your convention calendar, but still is going to give you some uh, event information. Um, so that's that. Uh, you can also, there's, there's a bunch of ways you can leverage your market reports. You can leverage market reports Oops. for nearby local events as well. In this case, we're going to go look at the future. We're going to look one year out. And we're going to see, look for these demand spikes, which happen to occur on all. Oops, sorry. We can leverage market reports for nearby local events as well. In this case, we're going to go look at the future. We're going to look one year out. And we're going to see, look for these demand spikes, which happen to occur on August 6th and 7th in this market. So we'll go back to our listing. We'll go to the calendar. Let's go ahead to look at August here. We can actually see what's happening on those days. So in this case, when we click on the 6th or the 7th, we can see that the prices are higher. And when we come over here to look, we can see that outside lands, one of the big music festivals in San Francisco is occurring. Now, if we want to create a custom rate, over these days, we can. We can either automate it and increase prices 20% above asking, or we can fix the prices at a certain fee. So let's say, let's put it for $900 a night, and we'll save it. And now we're fully in control. Great. So we do take a ton of information into account. Obviously, we will be adjusting your pricing already. Again, if you wanted to override or take more risk or less risk on any event, that kind of customization tool would enable you to do it. So again, some combinations of external data sets, a pricing algorithm and putting you in control is hopefully get a uh, kind of a good start for getting your kind of uh, calendar set up properly for, for uh, events. So again, we've, we've kind of covered seasonality, day of week, local events. These are the kind of main curves you will want to look at or the main areas you would want to research to come up with your own kind of revenue approach to your market. It will be unique to your market. It will be unique to your listing. We have some free stuff available if you want to use it. There are other great tools in the category as well that can give you really deep dives into things, transparent, key data, air DNA, et cetera. They all offer you a lot of intelligence. So like, you know, hopefully we're offering you enough to, to get the job, uh, to get you started and you can supplement with all, all these other tools as well. Lots of good, lots of good stuff out there. Um, okay, so that was the first section stepping through um, hopefully ways that you can turn into what we would say uh, is a, a market master. Section two, uh, we're making relatively good time but I'm gonna keep going. Responding rapidly, rapidly to your market. So what I want you to uh, assume is that that first section we went through would get your calendar set up well for looking forward. But of course, as we all know, markets change quickly, especially this year, right? So uh, this is showing you a, just a local demand chart actually for San Francisco. And in January, uh, so early January here, that purple line shows these demand, the demand spikes. And then you can see the, in March we have, so the same local demand chart a few months later has changed dramatically. April has plummeted. Now this is actually before, this chart was created before San Francisco went into a full lockdown and before California had declared a state of emergency. So you can imagine what happened to these other, the orange demand spikes moving forward. Well, they disappeared as well, right? So obviously this year is extreme. We wanted to give you an extreme example of how quickly your market can respond, but uh, we all know that our market changes daily, so we're going to dive into that. Um, there are two key skills you need to be really good at to basically take advantage of your evolving market. One is being a pacing pro, and one is being a demand detective. You can tell I like alliterations. Pacing pro. This is defined as the art and skill of not too soon and not too late bookings. Okay? On the chart here, we're showing, obviously, days until stay date. 
we all know if we sell too soon, we are very likely leaving money on the table. Uh, if you're booking out all your rooms 100 days out before, call it 90% of the market has even started to book, well, 90% of the market didn't get to see your price and decide whether you were the right place to stay. You sold too early and you probably left money on the table. We know that. There's also too late. And I love getting late bookings, right? I've been an operator in the category. The best thing was bookings that arrived the day of or the day before. It was extra found revenue. But I would stress that often, especially in the short-term rental space, where your property will either be booked or unbooked, to think of those last-minute bookings as great, but also lucky. So I'm not going to lie, doing pacing well without software is really, really hard. There is a way you can do this. Um, there's kind of a, a key, a couple key things for you to know. So you really want to look at your market's lead time, right? And this has probably changed a lot for you in the last 12 months. Uh, this is a tool that Airbnb used to offer. I cannot find it right now. Um, it was really cool. It actually gave you a lot of interesting intel about pacing. If anyone can find it and wants to share a link in the chat, I'm sure that would be helpful to all of us. But um, they would show you kind of uh, what percentage of people had booked, um, you know, year over year information. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can also go to Wheelhouse again to the market report um, and look at lead time. Now, I think the thing that I'll I'll hit here is. This is uh, really a roll up. This chart here is a roll up of your market's lead time on a monthly basis, right? So we're looking at, in this case, every single property, all the aggregated lead time. Obviously the lead time for a one bedroom versus an eight bedroom is gonna be far different, right? And it's actually gonna be different on a daily basis too. So this chart here is a very is a roll up of your lead time. If you dive a little more deeply in to some of these other sections, you can see this, which is that your lead time is actually highly variable, highly variable, right? So let's take a quick step through a little video here and a slightly deeper dive into lead time. And for the first time today, we're going to use the distribution uh, metrics here. So what you can see, and we'll do lead time, let's look back in November. Um, what you can see here is how many days in advance was a booking made. And you can see here that zero to five days out, 15% of all bookings in the San Francisco market were made. And here we can see that 20 days out, almost 50% of all the bookings in the market were still not completed 20 days out. Now we've seen a huge shift in the last few months around this in most markets. And of course you'll want to filter by bedroom types to learn more about your particularly particular inventory type, but there's a lot to learn here that can help inform what is the right lead time and therefore how should you be pacing in your market. Andrew, can you, um, the slides are a little on the small side and unfortunately I don't know how to fix that. Could you go back to those charts and just explain what those curves are and the bars are? On this one in particular? Well, yeah, that one, or actually I was thinking the pacing one is probably more important. I don't know if you can get to that in the video. Uh, this one here? No, the one that we were just looking at the video with the pacing, the bars, and then the pacing line. To, to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I think that's super oh. important concept for people to understand, and I, I'm not sure if they can grok it from the slide. Totally, totally. Okay, so um, a slightly deeper dive into lead time and for the first time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh shit. Okay, so I don't know. Let me let me try one more time. <laughs> a slightly deeper dive. Sorry, I feel like I've challenged your tech. There, yeah, right there. Boom. Okay. Yes. So, uh, good, excellent call out. Excellent call out. So, um, we are going to walk through two distribution curves today, which are a little bit more complicated. But um, the the power of the distribution curve is it allows you to see what percentage of of properties near you, or kind of what is the distribution of properties that have a certain attribute. So, for example, this first bar on the left shows. Um, what is the percentage of total bookings? In this case, you can see it's 15% that were made from zero to five days out, mm -hmm. right? The second chart shows you from five to 10 days out and we'll show you again the percentile. So when I went to uh, 15 to 20 days and I saw that the percentile, if we move forward just a little bit, um, as we scan through this, um, when we got right here and we can see the green line now, which shows me the percentile. This shows kind of the percentage of bookings that um, were completed still within 20 days. That means 45% of all bookings in November in San Francisco took place in the last 20 days mm -hmm. right. for, the, for the inventory set we're looking at. Now you can slice this a bunch of ways and that means 
55% of all bookings occurred 20 plus days in the future, right? right. So if you have a, so if, if you're going to expect a hundred eyeballs on your property in that time period, about half of them will have looked at it before that date and only half a look at it after that date. So you need to start thinking about price adjustments kind of like soon after that date. Yeah. And what we're going to get to here is you're going to look at your market's lead time and then you're going to slice by your inventory's lead time, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to want to know roughly when, you know, what is it? It's, it's tough to be a, a total master at all this stuff. So if you, if you just said, when is 50% of my market booked, am I booking faster or slower than market? Mm -hmm. That's going to give you a signal about how you're priced relative to market or how the market values your property right. relative to your comp set, right? So mm -hmm. all this will show you, this tool allows you to slice and dice. And for you, the, the most simple metric to look at is when is 50% of your market booked? And on average, are you booking you know, if your market books on a, on average 20 days out and you booking on average 40 days out, well, that's, right. a, that's a signal to you. Right. Now on the next slide, we're going to show you how to handle that because um, we'll play this video and then I, I think we're going to do another double click on the distribution curve in a minute. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably get some more good intel there. Uh, so let's watch this video quickly. And whether you want to be more aggressive or more conservative with your pricing, you can make meaningful adjustments. So, if you're overall booking too slowly or too quickly, you can come to your base price and you can either take a more conservative, more aggressive, or custom base price. Whatever you put here, Wheelhouse will start to respect as a new foundational pricing for your property. Or if you'd like just to adjust a few seasons, toggle over your season setting and you can make January either more or less aggressive or February more or less aggressive. Again, you're basically taking uh, the learnings of how you're pacing relative to market and making adjustments as you see fit to your calendar. Okay, Margo, did that did that make a little bit more sense? You, you can take that market report and we only looked at November mm -hmm. and pacing for November and we looked at a generalized curve there. But again, you could come into that report, you could look at um, kind of how you performed over the last couple of months. You could look forward to what lead times were looking like for your market. We won't know, we won't have a final output until the month ends. But um, it's a little bit of combining that just that the generalized market data, understanding whether you're booking too fast or too slow for either an individual month or for um, uh, overall and making right. the adjustments to help drive performance of your calendar. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We had, we've had a few questions just about um, the slides being a little on the small side. And so I just want to make sure that um, in addition to the 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 charts you're just take the time to explain what the axes are and what the things are because it's just hard for people to read so just just to tip thank on you. that as you can awesome going. awesome thank you and we will share a, a video of all this and then uh we can make the deck available too so you can do kind of a, a slow deep dive that's a great call and i'll see what i can do to adjust as we go or add more context thank you thank you for that flag yeah all, all right. right thank you section two demand detective uh defined as the art and skill of discerning the actual impact of an event I'm going to throw out a controversial opinion, which is essentially everyone gets this wrong. <laughs> Me too. Every time I've done management, this is really hard. And my double down is that you should assume that you are pricing local events incorrectly as well. And I don't mean that in a rude fashion. I just mean that this is really, really hard. Uh, why? There's a couple of reasons. One is that your competition, your comp set, often lacks the time, skills, and data to be able to price inventory well, right? Again, when I talked about, when I first came into the category, 80% of the inventory at the same price every single night of the year, well, that's not very sophisticated pricing. And sometimes uh, pricing strategies that uh, look a lot different from yours can put downward pressure on your property, it can be tough. So we need to recognize that um, pricing doesn't exist in a vacuum. It does exist in a marketplace. And therefore we need to think about our competition. And sometimes our competition's lack of time skills or data or a different strategy that they have can make pricing local events difficult. That's part one. Part two, events are super unpredictable. I mean this in both the sense that local events near you will emerge. You can imagine a wedding being a couple blocks away and all of a sudden all the homes book up near you. That's an event, that's kind of an event that'd be very difficult to foresee as well as you can imagine that there could be big events or holidays that are expected to be high periods of demand right. that do not materialize for any reason. It could be weather, it could be a global pandemic, yada, yada, yada. We all know that events or holidays are very unpredictable. And we, we also, it's very easy to have assumptions about, oh, well, it's a holiday. 
Therefore, I know 4th of July and Thanksgiving are going to be huge. And that might be true. And that even might be true in your market, but it also might not be true on your inventory type. Maybe that year, a lot of families are traveling together or a lot of individuals are traveling together. And we can all think of reasons why in the last year this would have happened. So you can see that even kind of a local event can have an impact on an inventory type or a locale as opposed to a broad market. So events are very unpredictable. And lastly is your market changes daily, hourly, even minute by minute. Uh, I know this sounds like someone trying to sell you a revenue management tool. So let me tell you more of why I mean this. Um, so the best hotels in the world change prices every three to five minutes. Uh, there's there's a reason they do this, which is um, they know consumer demand patterns really well. They know that when the China market comes online, when the European markets come online, you can adjust prices. They know that when uh, certain time zones in the U.S. cross over to 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and people start to go online and actually do their planning or in the morning they're doing their planning, there are times when people are booking and pricing is really, really important for a hotel. Now, we don't need to do this yet, but this just shows how much data and science goes into some of the best hotel revenue management systems, right? So pricing is hard. Markets are very dynamic. Pricing local events is hard. So anyway, we're going to give you a few trips, tips, tips, uh, tips, tips, tips and tricks, tips and tricks to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> um, and uh, for this, um, we're going to leverage local intelligence. So I know this is going to fall into the camp of a slide that's a little bit too small and a little bit too difficult to read. So what we're looking at here is a time series of nightly rates. So we're looking forward a year and we're, we're actually looking for first the pricing signal in your market. So in nightly rates, you'll see a pricing signal. That means how other people near you are pricing. Again, you can slice all this data by your inventory type or by a bunch of other information, but this will show you, hey, other people near me are pricing these nights higher and you can go do an investigation, right? So leverage pricing signal first. And then you can also leverage actual booking patterns. So now we're toggled over to an occupancy chart where we'll show you occupancy today and based on our latest and greatest projections, what is occupancy protected to, projected to be? So you can see again, where certain demand spikes are emerging. Um, so these are two tools, they're all available on the market report. They're the forward looking things that you can leverage to give you data about how people are pricing that might signal local intelligence or how the, you know, what, how occupancy is actually emerging in your market that will show you actual booking patterns, predictive and reactive modeling. You're well on your way to doing great revenue management. Once you find a local event, you can really easily create a custom rate. So here I found a local event. We've already shown this. I can come in and again, I can automate that price. So I can either say, Hey, I want to keep my dynamic pricing. Wheelhouse keep adjusting it, but I bump the rates 20%. Um, or you can fix in the price and you can do so for a weekday, weekend price, et cetera. It's pretty darn flexible. Um, the last thing I was going to remind everyone to do is uh, I probably set a calendar reminder to do this every single week until you're really familiar with the tools. But um, reactive modeling, if, if you automate, great. But uh, reactive modeling, you also want to be going in and getting really good at discerning local demand signals near you. So it's great to set a calendar reminder. Again, you can just hire machines, AKA wheelhouse to do this for you. We will take what you did, which was predictive modeling or price-based modeling along with reactive modeling. And we'll combine those into your price recommendations. And we'll show you really quickly how we do that here too. So here, um, this is the back end. This is data science tooling that is not consumer ready yet. That's why it's not designed well. Uh, but you can see here, we have this predictive model, a reactive model. Your price recommendations on wheelhouses are, are a blended model. So we combine what the market thought and what the market actually did. And you can see we blend those models in a dynamic fashion, meaning this second chart down here, which we'll zoom ahead to. Um, this is dynamic blending for the category, right? This is, we uh, in the far future, we use predictive modeling. What do, what do people think the prices are going to be? And then over time, every single day, we're watching how the market book up, books up and we're using a reactive model. So in the far future, we rely on the predictive model. If, if the state was tomorrow, almost all of your price recommendations are going to be the reactive model. We only care what has happened in the market as the market as the stated approaches, right? A good way to think about this is the market is the ultimate source of truth. That's very interesting. So the so the blend differs depending on how far out you're looking. That's very that's very interesting. It, it does. And then the other kind of cool part, and then you can see these spikes here is like, well, it's not a purely linear correlation. We don't just have to draw a line and say 100 days out, we're X. Mm -hmm. um, if, if more bookings occur near you, our reactive model kicks in sooner. So these demand spikes here show you that, OK, well, there are bookings near you. There are bookings on your inventory type. Therefore, the reactive model is kicked in. It's almost mm -hmm. 
you can think about the machines as doing your work. They're kind of like, they help you out every single hour of the day, kind of watching your market. Mm -hmm. So if you can combine your strategy, which you can set in wheelhouse with machines that are kind of helping you stay up to date, it can be really powerful. It can be mm -hmm. really powerful. So it's, it's dynamic modeling. And I know it's a little cheesy, but it is dynamic modeling, and we've seen it have great results. Mm -hmm. I was going to tell you a story, but we're running behind, so I'm going to skip it. Suffice to say, I, the only thing I'll say here is uh, we've been we've been doing demos of that backend data science tool for a lot of professional customers lately. We can do the same to you. You can reach out directly to me. We'll walk you through all the cool data we see. Eventually, we will be bringing it out to the front end. But if you want help now, if you need help this year, reach out to me. We just got a great customer moving over uh, because of this, and it's it's, it's pretty fun stuff. Great. So great new skills. Pacing Pro and Demand Detective. And Margo, I'm now gonna go back to you. I know we only have five minutes left theoretically. There's one more thing I was hoping to share. Should we share it out in a video later or should we try to knock it out in a few minutes? Um, I think people are wanting to see as much market data as they can from this. So I guess I, your call, how do you wanna do this? Um, are people asking about a specific market that we want to dive into or do we want to go through the last kind of uh, I think they're looking for like the practical tips and stuff that they can do as much as possible. Keep going. People okay. Say, keep going. Let's go through this because I actually think this is a good one. Um, okay. We're going to teach you how to capture the best bookings. And for everyone, this is going to be important because again, we thought when we looked at the regional impact, so many markets are so different, but there is one thing that has changed for most markets and that is length of stay. And I re really would encourage you that the best way to get revenue right in 2021 is going to be uh, becoming really good at length of stay. So this is a very simple bet that for most people on this call, bookings equal 99% of your revenue, right? Ancillary revenue is really not a thing hugely in the STR space, early check-ins, late checkout, hostfully can help you with that but it isn't massively important in our category yet. It probably will be soon. Yep. Bookings are really important. Therefore, it is extremely important to get the right bookings. And we all know that an $800 booking does not equal $800 in revenue. Mm -hmm. Somewhat in your control. Uh, I would highly recommend you sell across multiple channels. We have the data to show that it drives revenue. However, channel fees, which you know is basically the take rate of the channel, does impact the expected revenue. You all know that. More in your control is your cancellation policy. Right, um, cancellation policy varies by inventory type, by channel, by market, et cetera. The one piece of data that we saw in our supply that is worth noting is that we saw a way different cancellation rate on booking versus Airbnb. Booking had a really high cancellation rate, Airbnb did not, right? Uh, the way to handle this, I would highly, highly recommend you put a strict cancellation policy on your booking.com listings. You can be safely leaning on Airbnb. Again, this could be slightly different for you. This is just what we saw in the data and this combination maximize expected revenue. The last thing very much in your control is to avoid the breaks. So Andrew, WTF is a break. We all know what it is. It's a three day booking that, you know, interrupts some other potential booking window. And we know this, that splitting events or splitting high demand periods is bad. So there's a solve and it's called min stays. We're gonna talk about dynamic min stays. Um, and I think this is so powerful that we should rebrand it for this year as max stays, okay? We're gonna go through two videos real fast and then we'll be done. Great. All right, we're back on our market reports and here we're gonna go over to the historical tab. And what we're gonna be looking at is the length of stay. We actually wanna go down to the second section here, which is a distribution curve. It's different than the time series curve. It's a little bit more complicated, so we're going to step through it together. So what we'll do is we'll go look at November. So this was the most recent month. And what this shows us is it shows us the percentage of stays of a particular length, right? So here, again, we're on the distribution curve. That green line is the percentile. So when we're looking, what we're looking for here is we want to see how the average length of stay in our market has changed. I know professional operators whose average length of stay has gone from four nights to 28 nights, right? There's been a huge shift in most markets, probably yours as well. If you can see that a lot more bookings are, are longer uh, or are taking place in your market, have a longer booking time, it's going to change how you think about min stays. Uh, one to two nights, two to three nights, three to four nights, et cetera. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for when this percentile, which is the green line, reaches roughly 50%. Now, what that means is it means that 50% of stays are four nights or shorter and roughly 50% of stays are four nights or longer. Meaning if you were to set a min stay of four nights across your whole San Francisco calendar, 
your listing would still be available to, to roughly 50% of all bookings or all searches on Airbnb. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's probably a safe place to start. Great. You combine that data with this, which is our min stays tool. You can come in and you can do dynamic min stay settings. That means if you're like the same market was going up, raise your global minimum stay. You can toggle that gap nights. Should any open windows of, of nights emerge, you can toggle that gap nights with one switch. And should you have a four night min stay and the three day window opens up, we will automatically shift it over to a three night min stay. You can come in, you can look at, uh, you can adjust for the weekends as well. You can go set your own kind of, um, you know, should you want your state, like for all state dates that are 30 nights out, if you want to change the min stay for that, super easy, very, very dynamic. And you can combine that length of stay setting with your min stays. It's super powerful. I honestly think it's the best thing you can do going into 2021. What, um, there's a great question from Lisa about um, a gap. So um, it, does Wheelhouse have a way to like make it so that a, a reservation cannot be made that creates an awkward gap on your calendar um, that would violate your own min stay rule, for example? As long as you have your min stay settings in Wheelhouse, no. I mean, you'll be merchandised across a bunch of channels. You can obviously accept or reject bookings. If, if bookings do emerge, I think the most powerful thing uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like where, you know, you don't want a reservation and then a one night gap because if your min stay is two nights, you want them, to, you want some logic to prevent that. I'm not sure. I, I know we've actually looked at that on the host fleece side of things as well. I just wasn't sure if you also. I Yeah, I'd recommend that. approaching it from the opposite angle, which is okay. I probably actually said a higher global midnight stay. Then I would toggle gap nights on, meaning if those weird windows emerge, mm -hmm. no matter you know, if you had a five night minimum length of stay, um, well, if a four night window opened up again, we'd automatically detect that we'd automatically update that. And that that's now bookable. Again, you could also say, okay, I want to keep my length of stay high until 45 days out. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm willing to drop the min stay. You can see that at the bottom, this kind of time-based minimum stay. Mm -hmm. You can also come in and say, well, for a date specific minimum stay. So for new year's, I'm going to do 10 nights or for whatever it's totally in control. So I'd, I'd actually urge, Looking at your length of stay setting, mm -hmm. setting your global main stay somewhere around that, especially this upcoming year, maybe even more aggressively, and then leveraging that time-based minimum stay or the other date-specific minimum stays to protect your calendar as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be perfect. It's just going to help you get the most valuable long-term bookings that are usually, yes, it's more revenue. It's usually lower operating costs as well associated with those bookings. Mm -hmm. So really good thing to have, especially in 2021, especially when we're so seeing so many of these stays that go from the initial stay will be 20 nights, but then people will extend for another 30. So you're kind of setting yourself up for a really long extended booking. So really valuable to, in a year where short-term rentals should be called truly flex rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really powerful tool. So I want to make sure we highlight that. Now we've gone through three things, market master, responding rapidly, booking best, Mm -hmm. We are launching this new product on Thursday. Everything you saw today is actually already at the door. There's more coming on Thursday as well. You can sign up today or anytime in the next, I can't remember how many days with this referral code, you'll be good to go. Thank you, Hostly, for hosting me. And now, <laughs> now we are ready for questions. And I apologize for an extremely rapid, but hopefully somewhat helpful uh, presentation. And of course, last thing I'll say is if anyone wants to reach out directly to dive into your specific market and get your regional data, uh, sign up, ping, ping me, say you're on the Hostfully webinar and we'll take care of you. Great. Um, Andrew, could I just ask you to stop sharing your screen and I'm going to go through some questions here. Um, yeah. okay. and, all right. So thank stop you. Sharing. Thank you everybody for all the questions and engagement. Um, I wanted to highlight a few questions that I thought would be interesting for you to try and address Andrew. Uh, yeah. Andrew and I, when we were preparing for this, we were like, you know, if we don't know, we'll tell you, but we'll do our best here. So um, first of all, Joe was interested in hearing more about kind of market data, like inventory by type, um, houses versus condos, large versus small guest count. Like what trends are you seeing? Um, I actually hostfully has published a lot of, uh, We've published some other market reports with some other partners like like home to go for example. Um, so the data is out there, but if you, do you have some perspectives on this that you want to share from Wheelhouse? Yeah, I mean, the, this is why we kind of changed the format a little bit today, which was um, the, the only certainty is that in most markets, length of stay has changed a lot and lead time has changed a lot. Most markets are booking a lot later mm -hmm. and stay, average stay length has increased a lot. Now for your specific market, we see massive variability in terms of like San Francisco, you know, the market demand has has 
plummeted, right? It's in the urban market. Um, in other sun and snow destinations, you're seeing massive demand that's like really hard to price as well because all of a sudden people are coming to town and trying to, to like, I mean, Live markets there. are renting out. <laughs> They're renting out in full, which is why if you yeah. wanted to create something valuable for every single person on this call, we would have had to know all your markets and kind of done a deep dive there. Margo, what would you add that you've seen that you think is valuable? I think you're totally right. So like the biggest driver for demand right now has to do with how safe people feel at the vacation rentals in your in your in your category. So um, and safety has to do with can they reach it with by a car? Do they feel um, like alone enough so that they're not interacting with other people? Do they feel like it's a getaway for for um, for companies and property managers that have those three qualities? They are killing it. For the others, it's terrible, right? If you're in Hawaii, I mean, it's just a nightmare, right? Because people have to fly to get to you. I mean, yeah, not too much car traffic and going to Hawaii. Yeah. So I, I think that that's the biggest driver um, right now for demand. And then I think that the the, the tips you gave everyone today about looking at seasonality trends, I actually do believe that they're going to apply next year because I think that still people are going to want to take a summer vacation. I think people are seeking regularity in their lives. And like, I think that's one, one of the reasons why Christmas and the Christmas season, I'm actually Jewish, but the Christmas season's hitting everybody so hard this year, right? We're just feeling super sad about not being able to get together with our families because we're used to it. So I think that those seasonal trends will still persist. I'm not sure how much, but those were, those would be the two observations that I've made. Um, I love that. I love that. The the two ads I would put for Joe, um, if you do go to that market report, you can slice by size of inventory, by type of inventory as well. Yep. You can slice by top performers. So you can only look at kind of the 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 highest percentile of folks within the category, which might be the most relevant for you. And to Margo's point, yes, I do believe that seasonality curve will exist. I believe day of week curves will exist as well. I believe you can learn some things from the past, but you need to combine it, especially this year with responding in real time to your market, either through automation or through continued learning. Yep. Uh, so lots of great questions in here. Um, uh, one person wanted to know about pricing for Wheelhouse. Can you give an overview of the pricing for Wheelhouse? Yeah, on Thursday, we're launching, uh, we, with Wheelhouse Pro, we're switching over to a SaaS model. Mm -hmm. We've historically been transaction-based. We actually, we chose kind of the most complex billing system to start. So you can either have a flat fee which starts at 19 bucks a month for profession for that pro platform, or you can do a transaction based model. We recognize this year that like some markets aren't going to be as strong, but still need pricing support. That transaction based model is 299 plus 0.75 percent of transaction fee. If it's better for you because you're feeling like you're going to have light bookings on particular listings or particular markets, you can leverage that, or you can get a uh, wheelhouse pro flat fee. Um, and I think like the way I think about it is eventually we will be full flat fee, but this year we're going to do whatever it takes to make your business the most profitable. And if that's, if that means you're paying less for pricing, figure out how to game us, right? That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That sounds, that sounds great. Um, a few people wanted to ask how to get in contact with your support team. They have really specific questions about wheelhouse cunt functionality or something that they were had yeah. questions about from before. So how do people get in touch with your support team? Uh, help at usewheelhouse.com is a great way to do it. Hello at usewheelhouse. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, we have a variety of ways on our site. We have a chat, live chat on our site. We have a great team to take care of you. Um, okay. So if you go to usewheelhouse.com, we have a chat fully available and we have a full team ready to go. All right. All right. The big question from Harrison Liu, when will short-term rentals be back to normal? Oh, and I like he, how he gave an or. He says mid next year or 2022. So that narrows it down at least about what yeah. that's a great question. I mean, honestly, it depends on the market, right? Some markets are better than ever. There's there's a lot of capital coming in the category. We're going to see the continued professionalization of the space occur this year. I do think this is the year of software and automation, which means hopefully wheelhouse, a whole bunch of other teams can help out. I'm sorry, Harrison, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you the answer to that. I can look at your market data with you and tell you a lot more. But uh, suffice to say, I think what's very interesting as a general trend is Short-term rentals are in, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is the year that is on mainstream. Airbnbs IPOing what next week? This week? Yeah, it's about to happen. Um, all like pro hoteliers are investing in the category. You got major private equity firms investing in the category. We just saw a massive hit to a bunch of like uh, operators in the category, our company included. But like, there's still big investment coming in. Um, I'm very bullish on the category. Harrison, let's take a look at your market and we'll figure out more. Great. Sorry, I'm just answering a few questions about getting slides after this. Um, okay, uh, the other we can, question. We can also follow up, Margo, with a, with a video where you and I go through a bunch more questions and just email out to everyone on the webinar. Mm -hmm. We do want to 
we appreciate the fact that you took an hour out of your busy day to to hang out with us and uh, learn from us. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think we can go for another few minutes. There's just a few other key questions in here that I think would be interesting for everybody to hear about. Uh, the prediction one. I mean, if you forced me to predict, I would actually say that I think vacation rentals are so hot right now too. I think if in some markets, I hate saying that because I think some markets have been devastated, ones that you have to use a plane to get to. But I think for most vacation rental and property management companies, this is going to be a good year. It's going to be a really good year. It actually might be a stronger year than in past years. Yeah. Uh, so will we get back to normal ever? No, because I think the new normal will actually be better than it was in the past. I think prices are going to be slightly higher. Yeah, I think that demand will be steady once again. I'm, I'm worried about urban demand in the U.S. until Q2. Absolutely. Urban major challenges, regulatory stuff too, big hurdles. Um, oh, one question uh, that came from so a few people who are kind of getting started with property management. Um, they were asking, is this really something that they should be thinking about? And I said, yes. Um, what uh, What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I think the data speaks for itself. Yeah, revenue management can definitely help. It can save you time and earn you more money. I think the question, the kind of the, the questions we often get around, uh, can you trust a revenue, like an automated revenue management system are really valid. Like how do we understand your unique market and your unique home? We actually could have spent a little bit more time diving deeply into the data about like how every single booking actually tells us more about your property and mm -hmm. actually increases the certainty of our projections. Uh, even for a new person, I would say revenue management can definitely help. We have a lot of uh, help center articles. We have a team that's available to help people again with as few. We treat everyone the same from one to mm -hmm. a thousand plus properties, right? So yeah. we're here to help you. Um, don't know if it's going to be right for you. I bet it is. There's a reason this is the default for airlines, hotels, and others. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm happy to, to work with you and see if we can figure out a solution that works for you. And just so you know, we at Hostfully during our onboarding with every customer recommend that they use a dynamic pricing provider. It's really, the value is very, very high. Um, and we've seen it across the board. So um, we, have, we, were, we also strongly recommend it. Um, there was one other question, which is the market report tool. Is that, is that free? Yes. It is, right? I just wanted yeah. to, before I just double, double confirm that. Yeah, at some point we'll charge for some aspects of it. So I don't know, but like right now it's free. We're not gonna lock you into anything. So I would hurt, like I would encourage you to use it now. We do we do consider it in beta. We want to make improvements to it. We have another cool tool coming out in a couple of weeks here that's going to uh, amplify the market reports quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually, I do believe we have great teammates who we have to pay to bring you great software. We do need we can't make it free forever, but right now it is free. Please go to use it. There's other great market report tools out there too, but yeah. uh, hopefully it's helpful. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it's like, this is a gift and I think it's really valuable that people, it's it's a starting point, right? I, I think your your point about doing pricing well and adjusting for events is really, really hard. It's just like something that you can always get better at, um, just like life. And uh, I think that's having a starting point though, where you understand where you are benchmarked against your other listings in your area is, is so powerful and it, it will help you in some way, right? We're not exactly sure this year exactly precisely how much it's going to help you but we know it's definitely going to help and and this year yeah. the more data the better right we all we all need better expectations about what's going to happen yeah um very true so, yeah so i think there's a bunch more questions in here but i think these are more specific to uh certain areas so i'd love to kind of take these offline maybe you and i can spend some time andrew going over them and responding um i'm not sure logistically how to do that but i will figure it out and uh, is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap? I've said a lot. I, uh, I, I will again stress <laughs> that we recognize we wanted to show you regional data. Therefore, we will honor that promise, which means if you email us and you want to dive into the data behind the scenes for your list, for your property, for your market, for your listings, mm -hmm. let us know and we will honor that. So we do appreciate your time. Uh, yep. that, that's all I'll share. And so hello at usewheelhouse.com and hello at hostfully.com. We are here for you. Reach out and you will get a recording of this after the um, the thing is over. And then uh, Andrew, also there have been several requests for slides. So I think we should distribute those as well. All right. Take care, everybody. Nice chatting with you, Andrew. Very fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.